afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Patrick Ray. I am one of the retirement advisors here with the Retirement Group. And today we're going to talk to you a little bit about the ConocoPhillips pension and some of the interest rate issues that we're seeing that might affect some of your decisions with respect to planning and trying to achieve and, and maintain a successful retirement. And that's one of our primary objectives when we do the things that uh, we bring to the table, like these educational workshops through our webinar series. So we appreciate you joining us. If it's the first time that you've joined us, welcome. Uh, we hope you find value in spending some time with us today. In the event that uh, you're coming back for another session of uh, additional information, uh, welcome back. And so again, we hope you find uh, value with spending some time with us today as well. Uh, if you have questions about what we have to talk about or something correlated to a concern that you may have, uh, please feel free to type your questions into the question and answer box, and we'll do our very best to get to those at the very end of the presentation. And um, here at the Retirement Group, we are an independent retirement planning and uh, investment planning firm, and we have no affiliation at all with ConocoPhillips, nor do we have any affiliation with Fidelity. As it turns out, our experience comes with the help that we've brought to the table for people who are in positions similar to yours uh, to help them achieve and maintain a successful retirement. And we take this uh, responsibility um, very deliberately and we're, uh, it's important for us to get you the best and most accurate information and education possible so that you can make informed decisions for what's best for you and your family. And so uh, with that, what I'll do is pass the presentation on to Tyson to talk about today's material and uh, we'll see you at the end of the workshop, Tyson. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, folks, for attending our webinar series this afternoon. My name is Tyson Mavar. I'm one of the ConocoPhillips focused retirement advisors for the retirement group here in Texas. And here in 2022, we've seen some pretty large increases to the interest rates that we want to talk about because many of our clients that are still working at ConocoPhillips are strongly considering leaving the company uh, by the third quarter. We're going to talk about why that could be and why that could impact your decision. Uh, if you've already left the payroll, you may have uh, decided to defer the election of your pension. And this could also be a catalyst to maybe electing that pension. So we're gonna talk about some of the decision-making process when retiring from the company, when selecting which option to take on your pension and how important the implications of interest rates are on the lump sum option if you're somebody who's even considering taking your pension that way. Uh, so Patrick mentioned a little bit about our company. We've been working with Fortune 100 employees for about 30 years, and we've been working with ConocoPhillips employees, Burlington, Phillips Petroleum, uh, Conoco Incorporated employees for several decades. Our hope is that if you decide to work with an advisory firm when you leave ConocoPhillips, that you might consider working with our company. Uh, but there's no obligation to do that. And we hope that whether or not you already have an advisor, or maybe you're considering doing everything on your own, you will utilize some of the resources that we have available. And all we ask in return is that you refer us to some of your coworkers if you found value in these exercises. Uh, we do have a cash flow analysis that we do complimentary. Found it very helpful for a lot of people trying to ascertain whether or not they're on track for a successful retirement but also find some ways that they can improve their retirement sustainability, whether it's from a tax perspective, uh, maximizing the benefits from ConocoPhillips when they leave, or just making sure that they're making the most of their benefits while they're still working. All of these things we're delighted to help you with. If you have interest in scheduling a meeting with myself or Patrick or any number of our ConocoPhillips focused advisors at the retirement group, uh, feel free to do so. We could do a web meeting, an in-person meeting at the campus or just a phone call to talk about some of the important uh, issues that you uh, may be going through or dealing with as you approach your retirement. Uh, this QR code here will get you a link to our LinkedIn page. I encourage you to follow us if you're not doing so already because that's where we publish a lot of this content that we produce periodically specific to the ConocoPhillips retirement strategies. And we talk a lot about the different benefits plans that employees have because with all the mergers and acquisitions, most people we talk to have a different genesis with the company. And as a result, we'll have different benefits plans available to them. Uh, many of my clients that have had careers that are in excess of two decades will have one of the defined benefit plans. I have many folks that I work with that came from Phillips, that came from Conoco, that came from Burlington, and many folks that have worked there for several decades that also don't have any of these benefits plans because they chose to convert to the cash balance plan after the merger, the main merger in 2000 and 
two took place where they harmonized the plans and created this cash balance plan that has some benefits over the defined benefit plans, but uh, unfortunately does not grow as quickly for a long career individual. It's typically not going to be as uh, lucrative. There's not going to be typically as much money in that plan, but interest rates affect these plans differently. And today we're going to talk about what the current interest rates are and how each plan uh, is different in terms of how rates are going to affect the lump sum payout in particular. If you're not as familiar with how your plan works, how the age penalties work, what different payout options you have, and especially how these interest rates impact your lump sum, I strongly encourage you to schedule a short phone call with one of our ConocoPhillips focused retirement advisors so that we can hopefully get you up to speed and what you should be focusing on as you approach your transition from the company, maybe even after you leave the company and why you might consider waiting to take your pension after you leave ConocoPhillips. Uh, even if you're not going into retirement, you may, uh, like a lot of people that I've talked to this year, uh, be planning to leave the company, go work somewhere else, maybe in the industry, maybe not even in the industry. Uh, but you want to understand the timing issues of electing your pensions, the tax implication, and also the moving parts associated with how your pension grows and shrinks over time so you can maximize what you walk away from the company with. So many of you know there's a variety of different ways to take the pension. The lump sum has become increasingly popular in the last few years because interest rates have been going down the last few years. And for the defined benefit plans, at least at ConocoPhillips, these lump sums have an inverse relationship with interest rates. So as interest rates have gone down, people have seen their lump sums go up pretty quickly in the last few years. However, that's a risk going forward that as interest rates start to go up, you could see some pretty substantial decreases to your lump sum, which means you may want to refigure your plan. You may want to consider working longer. You may want to save more while you're working. You may want to plan to spend less once you get to retirement, or you may want to consider the annuity option, even if you are always planning on taking a lump sum. And you know, especially because the lump sum has become very popular, it's not appropriate for everybody. Don't take the lump sum just because your friend or your coworker is taking it. There's a lot of different uh, implications, both good and bad for all of the options that you have. And once we get to understand the values that you appreciate and have for your retirement, your family characteristics, uh, life expectancy is important in this decision. Uh, your risk tolerance is also a factor in this decision, whether you're more conservative or more aggressive minded with your investments. All these play a role in which option is likely going to keep you happiest in retirement and ideally get the most money out of the company throughout the rest of your life after you leave the company. Sometimes it's the lump sum, sometimes the annuity. It's not an obvious decision and it's some guesswork involved, but we want to choose the option with the highest degree of certainty that's going to give you the most money throughout your lifetime for you and your family. Now, I'm going to zoom in here because what we're looking at here is the current interest rates and previous interest rates that affect the various plans. So on top here, we have the most recently published interest rate. It was based on rates for December of 2021 that impact lump sum recipients for quarter two of 2022. And the specific rule on that is that the company will look back to the fourth month prior to the quarter you are commencing your benefit. So quarter two starts in April, they look back four months, they use December's interest rates for anybody who not just retires in the second quarter of 2022, but actually commences their benefit or takes their lump sum. You can see there's four different rates here. Well, these first three interest rates are for uh, current service. Those folks that have a defined benefit plan, and we talked about the main ones earlier, Burlington, uh, Conoco Heritage, Phillips Heritage employees, uh, not related to the uh, cash balance plan, as it turns out. But these first, second, and third segment rates are associated with corporate bond interest rates, short, intermediate, and long-term corporate bonds. Uh, still very low historically, and you can go Back here at the bottom, you can see quarter four of 2019, we sh showed what those were. Still substantially lower than what people were taking lump sums back at the end of 2019 were receiving. Uh, so still very high lump sums historically, but you can see compared to December of 2020, for instance, which were folks that retired and took their money in quarter two of last year, uh, quite a bit higher, almost 50 basis points higher on the second segment rate today than they were 
uh, just a year ago. And a relationship that we encourage everybody to remember, every 1% increase to these rates results in roughly a 10% drop in your lump sum. And that's a function of your age. The older you are, the less severe that relationship is. And that relationship that we've seen is typically associated with a 60-year-old. So if you're in your mid-50s, for instance, it could be closer to a 12% drop in your lump sum for every 1% increase to these rates or a 6% drop for a half a percent increase like we've seen in the last year. Uh, that's pretty substantial for somebody, you know, we have many folks that have lump sums in excess of a million dollars, which means it's important to figure out the timing of this decision because in some cases in rising interest rate environments, we've seen people working literally for free for the company because the losses in their lump sum are uh, commensurate with the gains that they're receiving in salary and other benefits like company match and the 401k and some other benefits that we look at when we do this cost benefit analysis. Something else to remember, the second segment rate is the most important of these three corporate bond segment rates because it carries the largest weighting in the calculation. It's about three times more relevant than the first segment rate, for instance. And the relevance of the third segment rate is dependent on your age and therefore your life expectancy. So uh, fortunately, you can model different retirement dates and different interest rate assumptions in the online modeler. This is very, very helpful, especially as you get close to retirement, to assume that interest rates are going up, see what that does to your lump sum, and be ready to potentially pull the trigger uh, and maybe even have your retirement date based off of these changes to these interest rates. So quite a bit of money involved here. We spend a lot of time with the folks that we work with. And even if you're not a client yet, we're delighted to uh, give you some feedback on what we think you should be focusing on in the decision on when to leave. Because certainly there's many reasons to continue working, your salary being the main one, uh, some other benefits you wanna consider, but some reasons to consider leaving, especially in a rising interest rate environment, and especially considering the opportunity cost of that money being locked up in your pension plan. Whereas had you not been working at the company, you could be earning some interest on it through some investments, either in your 401k or a rollover IRA. So many different uh, moving parts and variables to look at, but these segment rates affect the uh, pension lump sums for service beyond 2008. For service prior to 2008, depends on which company you work with. Uh, they may be using the PBGC rate if you came from Conoco, uh, but for everybody, Conoco, Burlington, Phillips, they also use this 30-year treasury interest rate index that is also based on four months prior to the quarter that you're commencing your benefit. Uh, substantially lower interest rates, producing higher lump sums for the service that you have prior to 2008. Uh, but also need to be followed. You can see they're not perfectly correlated. We saw increases to the uh, segment rates uh, from September to December, while we saw a reduction in the treasury interest rates. So this affects people differently depending on how much service you had prior to 2008 compared to since 2008. And again, very helpful to model different interest rate assumptions in the uh, online calculator the benefits modeler, but it's not always gonna be a 1% increase in corporate bond rates, uh, also resulting in a 1% increase to the treasury bond interest rates as it turns out. Now we're not showing these here because as it turns out, they do not affect the pension plan, but the January corporate bond interest rates were published this week. And it's the March interest rates that we're looking forward to being published, which will impact the third quarter lump sum recipients and maybe an incentive for people to leave by the second quarter and also commence their benefit by the second quarter. But let me just read these rates to you because they ticked up quite a bit. The first segment rate in January was 1.41%. That's compared to 1.16% in December. A pretty substantial increase, uh, 25 basis point increase, quarter of a percent in just one month. Second segment rate, which we talked about as the most relevant of these three rates, that is now 3.02%, or at least it was for the month of January. So a 30 basis point increase on that one, 0.3%, that could mean a 3% drop in your lump sum if rates stay flat 
through the rest of the quarter and through March, which is really the month that matters. And then the third segment rate is 3.36, so not as big of a jump on the third segment rate, but all of these interest rates went up. And if they continue to do so through March, it could be a pretty good incentive for a lot of people that are still working at ConocoPhillips to at least consider their retirement plan and see if it might be a good time to go. There's probably some other factors in there, such as can you actually afford to retire? Probably a pretty good question to answer first. Uh, might you consider some part-time or full-time work after you leave the company? Are there other jobs available that you might be interested in or excited in considering? Uh, many of these things that we go through in our cash flow analysis, not just from a quantitative perspective, but also from a qualitative perspective, might be helpful in deciding not only when to leave the company, when to take your pension, and also how to invest these funds after you pull the trigger and either take the lump sum or take the annuity, in which case these interest rates are far less uh, relevant to this decision-making process. Unfortunately, 74% of Americans over the age of 50 do not have a written plan for their retirement. This is unacceptable, folks. There's no reason other than just because of complacency or lack of interest is what I've seen in a lot of cases that people wait till the last minute to put this plan together. A lot of companies will charge you for this. It could be a reason that some people shy away from doing this early on. Retirement Group will do this for you for free, complimentary, and a variety of companies will uh, as a result of wanting to earn your business or at least wanting to get some of your time to tell their story. And we're one of those companies that we think we have a pretty compelling story on why you might consider doing some business with us after you leave the company, but there's no expectation of that. Uh, if you'd like to have us run a cash flow analysis for you, uh, please let us know. Uh, we're here to help folks. Uh, if you'd like to schedule a meeting with us, or if you just have any generic questions you'd like to ask, or just to schedule a phone call with one of our ConocoPhillips folks advisors, you can email us at info at the group.com. You can call us at the home office at 800-900-5867. You can even take a picture of this QR code on the left to get it onto one of our ConocoPhillips focused advisors calendars and talk through some of these important issues. And again, here's that LinkedIn page QR code if you'd like to follow us as we will repost these webinars that we uh, do live uh, in a recorded manner through our LinkedIn page. So follow us there and make sure you don't miss on any upcoming content. Uh, I think that was all that we had to cover today, Patrick. So if there was any questions in the chat box, go ahead and uh, ask them or if there's any house minute, last minute housekeeping issues you'd like to bring up, uh, do that as well. Yeah, thanks, Tyson. Uh, we actually do have a couple of questions. And uh, as you and I both know, it's it's easy to get uh, sidetracked with people who are actually planning and doing a bunch of homework and asking us questions and so forth. But this is unique because we also want to encourage people who haven't looked into their retirement benefits or haven't done any pension projections because maybe they are a little younger, or they have younger kids, and they feel like retirement is so far away that it may not be worth it for them uh, to actually start the planning process. And frankly, you and I both know that's the farthest thing from the truth. And right. so this question is, what is the first step uh, to initiate retirement and get pension estimates from uh, my pension and or my 401k? Yeah, great question. Um, first step is to run the projection. So you could do this on the Fidelity website, both with relation to where your current 401k is. There's a lot of great resources and tools in that website, the net benefits website. And then on your pension plan, all you're doing is running models of when you might consider retiring, so different dates, uh, as well as when you might consider taking your benefit, which might not necessarily be aligned. For instance, you could say, I want to retire at 55, but wait until 60 to commence my benefit because you're still able to age out of penalties throughout those years. Of course, you're still at the risk of interest rates in that scenario, but the first step is just going on the Fidelity website. We're happy to walk you through this website and give you some pointers on things to maybe consider as you're running those projections. And then we'll compile that information into a useful cash flow analysis where you can see where you stand and uh, some of the things you might be wanting to watch out for as you approach that date, whenever that might be. Now, if you are uh, ready to retire, there's a, a uh, collect your pension, a benefit commencement process, which is some paperwork you'll have to fill out. Uh, if you're married, your spouse is going to have to sign off on you taking the lump sum or any number of the options that don't involve them, like the joint annuity does. And that's something else we help our clients with is the paperwork process. Once you're initiating your retirement, 
because that's one that you definitely do not want to make a mistake on, especially because of the sensitivity of the timing issues. So uh, just let us know how we can help on that or if you need some guidance on where to go. Yeah, here's a good question, Tyson. If I leave ConocoPhillips and don't take my pension immediately, how will inflation impact my lump sum and what rate can I expect to use? Oh, wow. That, there's, well, that's, I have to break this one down a little bit. So <laughs> when you leave the company, you don't have to take your pension. You could take the annuity right away and start collecting checks right away. That may be advisable. You might want to continue to wait because you're not yet age 60 and still have some age penalties. Uh, your lump sum is going to fluctuate based on fluctuating interest rates. But the question was in reference to inflation. We saw close to 40 year highs in inflation last year. And unfortunately, inflation and interest rates are correlated. And this is actually part of our monetary policy makers directive is to maintain a reasonable level of inflation. Well, one of their uh, weapons in the arsenal to do that is through open market operations and manipulating interest rates by buying and selling both corporate now and government bonds. Now, corporate bonds are the ones that affect pretty much everybody's defined benefit plan at ConocoPhillips. Treasury bonds uh, still have an impact, but it's the 30-year treasury, which the Federal Reserve does not have as much control over. But if we see inflation, it's likely we're going to see rising interest rates following this inflation. So this is a big risk of leaving your pension at the company. If you take your pension, you at least lock in that lump sum or lock in that annuity payment. Uh, but if you leave it there, the reason you might want to leave it there is because it's growing because of age penalties, for instance. But you could be more than offset based on rising interest rates, which are likely to follow an inflationary environment. So uh, fortunately, they don't change but once a quarter. So after you leave the company, it effectively becomes a quarterly decision on should I take my pension or should I leave it there? And it's not an easy decision. We don't have perfect information, unfortunately, to make it. But this is why a lot of people work with a skilled advisory team that has some experience working with ConocoPhillips employees to make sure that they haven't left anything on the table or make sure that they've considered every aspect of this decision. Uh, hopefully that helps. And the other issue too, with the annuity, if you do take the annuity on your pension, a higher inflationary environment is just going to mean uh, lower purchasing power with that annuity because the annuity does not get adjusted for cost of living increases over time. So a lot to talk about there, a lot to consider. And I encourage that individual who asked that question just to call into our office and have a more detailed conversation with one of our representatives. Yeah, this, this has generated a few more questions <laughs> talking okay. about interest rates and inflation and clearly uh, everyone being concerned about an inflationary environment and how it may or may not impact their, uh, their pension. So if the speaker is saying inflation will affect my uh, uh, interest rates on my conical uh, lump sum, how does that affect me if there's high inflation? Well, the higher inflation goes, what's likely is that the higher these interest rates are going to go. And the higher the interest rate's going to go, the lower your lump sum is going to go. If you're still working, the only decision you have that can impact this is to actually leave the company and retire because you can't take your pension while you're still working. And that might all, not always be a good decision based on your financial readiness to leave the company, or you may have to consider going to work somewhere else, which it may be beneficial to lock in your lump sum in the low interest rate environment, get it reinvested, and then also go earn some income elsewhere before you start tapping into that resource. But the reality is higher interest rates are just going to mean lower lump sum payouts, unless you're somebody who's on the cash balance plan. It's an entirely different discussion because higher interest rates actually will help the growth rate of your cash balance plan, just like higher salaries will help the growth rate of that plan. Different relationship, but a lot of people that we talk to, especially if you were hired after 2003, uh, you may not have as much of a detriment to a rising interest rate environment. Uh, first thing to know is which pension plan you're on, and we can help you identify that as well if you're not sure. Yeah, here's a really good question, Tyson. Um, Fidelity does not have a good tool for stock options and, you know, pension planning and kind of like assumptions under certain scenarios for interest rate and uh, uh, inflation, what your portfolio returns are going to be, et cetera. And would you be able to address this uh, as far as stock options and interest rate scenarios and so, and so forth when doing a projection? 
Yes, that all of that would be addressed in our cash flow analysis. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a really good question, and and frankly, that might be the reason that uh, moves the needle for you to uh, to to forward uh, the information to us and spend some time with us, so we can actually do a cash flow analysis for you because of this very thing. So, uh, so yeah, very good question. Um, let me see. There was one other question in here. I think before we uh, before we let go. Oh, um, how much time do I have before interest rates start significantly reducing my pension? I guess that's a loaded question. I suppose uh, depending on what the definition of significant is, but yeah, uh, you can take that. Well, good. It's a great question. Unfortunately, we don't. Yeah, it depends on you know, is it a ten percent drop, a twenty percent drop? Uh, here's the one thing that we do know because we can't predict where interest rates are going. We just know they're very low now and there's not a lot of room for them to drop. There's a lot more room for them to go up. Uh, but it becomes a quarterly assessment. And fortunately, there's a look back period. Not, only, not every company gives their employees this look back period wherein right now we know the December rates. Therefore, we know the second quarter lump sum interest rates. Because we're not yet in the second quarter, we have a bit of time to where we can literally see how much our pension is growing or shrinking uh, should we wait until the next quarter to commence it. So it wasn't too large or detrimental of an increase this last quarter, in other words, from going from the first to the second quarter. However, based on what the January rates came out as, they went up about 30 basis points. And unless they reverse course, it's likely that the third quarter is going to show some very significant losses on lump sums. Now we won't actually uh, know what these rates are and have the ability to project pension plans given the new rates until the third week in April. So mark your calendars if you're somebody who's close to retirement anyway. It's usually about the 15th through the 21st of April, the IRS will publish the corporate bond interest rates for March, which is the relevant month for the third quarter. And here we are in April, we still have two months until the end of the quarter to figure out, should I stay or should I go, given what we know about the lump sum going down into the third quarter, if that's what ends up happening. Again, we can't predict that far out in the future, but these are the timing issues that are helpful to know as you're getting close. And what a lot of people that I'm talking to right now are worried about is that interest rates progressively go up every quarter for the next several years and they see a slow deterioration or potentially a fast deterioration of their lump sum payouts. So while it's a risk, it's not a certainty, but it certainly needs to be considered in this decision-making process of, you know, do you have the financial ability and wherewithal to retire? And may it potentially be a better time to retire now? You may actually have more money now and not have to work as long if these rates continue to go up. So this is the best time in a while, I would say, to be putting the plan together if you haven't done so yet. And talk to lots of different groups to see who might be a good fit for your business if you decide to work with an advisory firm, because we're all gonna have different opinions and different uh, resources to be able to add to the retirement planning process. And so we just hope that you spend a few minutes with us is all. Yeah, and you know that uh, we'll we'll finish up with this last question, Tyson. But it ties into this last question, which is you know comparing plans and comparing uh, scenarios and time horizons on when it's best for you to leave and those kind of things. And frankly, that's the whole purpose of the cash flow projection. So no matter who it is that you talk to, if you're looking for a partner in retirement, one of the things you might get the most value of is the scenarios that you could come up with with the with the group that you're talking to. So the more information that you could share with someone in our shoes, the better we can help you with transitioning from quarter two to quarter three, as an example, or whether it's best to postpone your disbursement from your pension, even though interest rates are a risk because of the penalties associated with your plan itself. And you know, a correlation of all kinds of other things. Does your spouse have a plan of some sort or some kind of fixed income stream that you can rely on? And oh, by the way, there's other variables like when to consider social security and other potential interest, you know, issues related to investment correlated type decisions. And so uh, in the end, hopefully the information that we talked to you about today provides you some value and at least gets you thinking in, in the terms and context of what we can do to help, because the more information you share with us, the better we can help you. And so we can address most of these things through these cash flow analysis, and you can reach out to us at 800 900 
5867. That's probably the easiest way to land on one of our calendars so that we can help you. And if you want, you can also email us at info at theretirementgroup.com. So we appreciate your attention today. Thank you very much for that. We hope you found some value in spending some time with us. And until next time, uh, we'll see you. Everyone stay safe. Thank you, folks.